Welcome everyone, in this video we are going to derive the maximum height formula in projectile motion. So, let's draw our picture so that we understand what is going on. Maybe we have a projectile here and we launch it with a velocity of v naught, the initial velocity, and the angle that our velocity makes with the horizontal, we call that theta. Now, you can picture what is going to happen if you ever throw a rock, it is going to follow a trajectory. It's going to come like this, and it is going to hit the ground at some point. Now, I will call the distance that it travels, the horizontal distance R, which stands for the range, and I am going to prove a formula for the range in the next video. But our focus in this video is the height specifically the h max the maximum height so we want to express this maximum height in terms of v naught theta and some constants for example the gravitational constant gravitational field strength or the, gravi the, the acceleration due to gravity now just a side note the tra trajectory that the projectile follows is a parabola all right, but I will just say this and move on because we don't really need this information for this proof. But in any next video, I am going to prove that this trajectory is, this one is a parabola. This is a parabolic trajectory. So I'm going to make that proof again, uh, just to say it. So how can we drive a formula for H max? Well, I am actually going to uh, give you guys two proofs. The one, the first one that we're going to discuss is just going to use kinematics. So let's call it one, and this is the kinematics approach. Kinematics approach. Of course, the two different ways will be equivalent to each other, and as you will see, they will give us the same result. So to use our uh, kinematics approach, I'm going to write... Uh, well, actually, before writing any formulas, I'm going to set up the coordinate plane like this. And now the formulas. We know that the velocity in the y direction can be represented as the initial velocity in the y direction plus the acceleration in the y, which will be negative g in this case times time. So we got this equation. Now, at the top of the trajectory, at this point, at h max, what will be our y uh, component of the velocity it will be just zero right i mean if we had a upward component we would be still going up so we wouldn't be at our uh, maximum height and if we had a downward component of velocity well then we would be going down which would mean that just a moment ago we had a higher uh, height so we still wouldn't be at our h max to be at the h max you need to have a velocity that has uh, its components in the vertical equal to zero. So only component is in the x direction, vx. Vy is zero here. Vy is zero. So this goes to zero. Great. And if we solve for t, we will get that it is going to be v naught y divided by g. And I am going to call this t... 1 over 2 this is the halfway t okay and what i'm trying to i mean what i'm trying to tell here is it took us some amount of time to get to the top and it is going to take us the same amount of time to uh, get to our initial level so this is t over 1 t 1 over 2 i mean just it's just a subscript so this is what we have and what is v not y what is our initial velocity in the y direction if we look at our v not drawing here, you can see that we need this component, which is the sine of theta component. So we got v not sine of theta divided by g. Great. Now we are going to use our formula for displacement. We have that delta y is equal to v not y times t minus 1 over 2 g t squared and uh, if you haven't seen my video about 
kinematics equations where I derived this and this formulas. Please go check that out. You can find it on the cards. So this is what we have. And if I want to make this a suite R for suite R case, I am going to call the delta y h max because remember we start at height equals to zero y is equal to zero at our initial position. This is h max. Our v not y is going to be v not sine of theta, just like we discussed a minute ago. Our t will be t one over two. It will be the half way t. So we substitute this formula that we just found. We found v not sine of theta divided by g minus one over two g. Now we will again have t halfway. So we square it to get v not squared sine squared theta divided by g squared. I put a two here and a two here. I notice that these g's cancel each other. So I in fact have the same denominator on both terms. So I can add them or subtract them, whichever you call. We have 2g on the bottom and on the top we're going to have well, we had two, two here, one there, so v naught squared sine squared theta. And this is actually our formula for h max. Notice we only have the initial velocity, the angle theta, and some constant, 2, and the gravitational constant, g. So this was the first approach. And as you can see, we only use kinematics equations that we have already proven. Now let's go ahead and do the second approach. So the second approach will be the conservation of energy approach. Conservation of energy. I hope I spelled that right. Anyways, in case I didn't, that's not really important now. So for the conservation of energy, we can say that if we call this point one and this one two, then the idea is behind conservation conservation of energy it is simple e1 the total energy at one is equal to the total energy total mechanical energy at two now e1 what can we say about our mechanical energy at the beginning it is going to be just kinetic energy because we start at uh, at y is equal to zero so we don't have a um, we don't have a what do you call it a potential energy so we get the kinetic energy which is expressed by the formula 1 over 2 um, and our velocity squared so we not squared this is equal to our energy at the second spot now this time we are going to have a kinetic energy and the potential energy our potential energy is simple it is going to be mg h max this is the gravitational potential energy now plus we will have some form of kinetic energy. So it is 1 over 2 m. Now, what is our v in this case? It will be squared, but what will be our v? Well, as I said, vy is equal to 0. The vertical component is not there. There is only the horizontal component. And in projectile motion, the acceleration is only in the vertical direction. So the horizontal motion is a uniform motion. There is no acceleration in the horizontal, so Vx is constant throughout the, uh, throughout the motion, basically. So we, what I'm trying to say is V0x is equal to Vx at any point. Maybe you call it Vx of t. It is constant, and this is equal to, if you look at our drawing, it will be this guy, and we need, its, uh, we need the cosine of v naught so we have cosine of theta times v naught and as i said this will be our velocity at the top so i just square it to get v naught squared cosine squared of theta now i see a great thing i see that m's drop here they are cancelled and you probably expected this because if you look at this formula you see that we don't have m so the mass of the object is insignificant uh, if you have the same initial velocity and the same uh, angle with the horizontal, then a heavy projectile and a light projectile will go to the same exact h max. Of course, if you neglect air friction. So if we solve for h max in this case, 
we can see that it is going to be equal to we will have a well let's see we will have one over two v naught squared we maybe put one minus cosine squared of theta i just factored it and we divide by 2g now you might have heard that one is equal to sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta and i actually proved this in a video and i'm going to to attach that so this is going to be these cosine squares will be cancelled so we will actually have sine squared of theta as the result of one minus cosine squared of theta and if we just clean this up we see that h max is equal to v naught squared sine squared of theta divided by 2g which is of course the exact same formula that we just derived using only a kinematics approach so as you can see you can solve a physics problem using uh, completely different approaches different ideas and if you do everything right and if your ideas are correct you end up with the same and the correct result also one thing to notice here you might be asking if i have a certain v naught so if my initial velocity is fixed with which angle can i achieve the highest h max so you just look at this formula and you say how can i max the h max well then if you do if you keep your v naught constant you would need to mm, to get the maximum value for from sine squared of theta because 2 and g are constants and this would be at if you want sine to get its uh, maximum you would need it to be equal to 90 degrees so that its square would also get its maximum value which is one in other words you would just be throwing your projectile upwards it will be launched directly upwards which i mean should make sense i hope that if you just launch it vertically if all the initial velocity is in the vertical direction it in fact travels to the highest point anyways i hope this video was helpful as i said in the next video i am going to prove that uh, i am i mean i'm going to derive an equation for the range and i am going to also prove in a future video that the trajectory trajectory of a projectile is a parabola hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any questions or comments please write them in the comment section i hope to see you in another video until then take care